best way to spot the elephant is um, to find a higher point where you can see more easy in the lower ground and you'll be able to see also the, um, over the trees then you'll be see uh, I mean you'll be easy to see them this is what we are trying to do now like we're on the top of the hill and uh, we are able to see far more than uh, being in the car and you're still uh, walking under the trees <laughs> In 1997 I arrived in the desert and in that time period the elephants slowly started returning into the area. First one big bull fur trucker came in and he left after a while and then eventually brought back more elephant herds. Eventually four herds entered the Uga Basin where we were working. We were very concerned about uh, immediate issues with conflict because obviously we have farmers out there in the desert, uh, subsistence farmers, it's all communal trust land with water points that they are dependent on. And these water points are incredibly fragile. The elephants in the dry period started utilizing their water points. And it's very quick for elephants to break a water point. Not on purpose, it's just because they smell water maybe underground in a pipe and they'll dig the pipe up and pull it up. And the first and foremost issue was to protect these water points and minimize the conflict as quickly as possible. So what we do is go out to those areas, chat to the farmers in those areas, and then we build um, basically a boma, a rock boma, around those installations so that elephants don't damage them and that they still have water for their livestock. Um, but obviously as elephants go into those community areas there's quite a lot of conflict with the people themselves. Um, you know, people walking around between houses and things like that. So it's a little bit of education when we, when we do have the chance to chat to locals and tell them, you know, how to interact with animals. I'm working with our PEACE project which is an education project. PEACE stands for People and Elephants Amicably Coexisting. And that's our goal with this project, is to help people um, who have elephants in the areas where they live and to help them learn about elephants, to increase their understanding, their knowledge, and hopefully then their concern for elephants and and to want to um, accept elephants. We are still on the right track. Um, you can see this is um, uh, last night, as you can see, all the outside still wet and not that much change on the color. But you can see uh, here, it's here, part of the color here is like getting uh, a little bit dry and changing a little bit getting different. So it like uh, a little bit early evening. I wanted to come to figure out whether conservation was what I wanted to do as a job for the rest of my life. I wanted to do something different, therefore I asked for a kind of career break, which will last eight months now. I need a little time out for my job, so I was uh, looking for this travelling. I was really interested in doing voluntary work abroad, so I typed in just into the internet, voluntary work abroad, and um, the site for ERA came up. Every two weeks is separated into the build week, which is the first week, and the patrol week, which, patrol week, which is the second. The build week, um, the first three build weeks was building walls. Uh, we finished a wall within the first two build weeks and then sec uh, the third one we uh, started a new one. And then uh, during patrol, you it depends where the elephants are at the moment and where they've not been recently. You get in on the Monday, um, drive around, find the elephants as soon as possible. And then by the end of the day, you try and figure out where they're headed that night. So in the morning, you've got less of a hassle trying to figure out which direction they've taken. We take the guys out with us on the vehicles and, you know, we teach them tracking. We teach them basic survival skills and show them. But it's, it's open involvement. The guys that are working out there in the field have been, uh, you know, out in the bush for a very long time and they understand a lot of how the systems work and how the ecology work and we're trying to get the people involved with that and in that week they get to spend time closer to desert elephants than, than anybody really would know 
There's very few tourism um, capacities that can deal with it like that. You go out, see elephants, are riding on a truck, which is going bumpy, nearly like going all over the desert, seeing all different wild animals. And at home, I'd just be working nine till five. You set up camp and like, you're just driving along after seeing the elephants or wherever and you're just like, that seems like a good tree. There we go. Pull the car up to it, uh, unload everything, just get camp set up and make a fire, cook some food and just sit there and have a cold drink and then just lie down in your bedroll and look up at the stars and there's nothing like it whatsoever. Obviously our first priority is to keep every volunteer as safe as possible. Um, we're never going to put volunteers in dangerous positions or situations. Part and parcel of why I'm here is because I have a lot of experience dealing with game. Um, so that if I get in, into a situation where, where game is around, if elephants walk into camp, then I can assess that situation and I can get volunteers in a good position out of the way that doesn't endanger them and doesn't endanger the elephants at all either. It's just a great experience and I don't know anyone who hasn't liked this project. It's just really amazing. Yeah, you do do a bit of work in, which sometimes is a bit hard. It's like heavy lifting. Um, but it's just an amazing experience and you have so much fun and great laughs. I've learned a lot from basically, let's say basic knowledge, like how to enjoy the nature, uh, the surrounding, how to make a fire, how to cook for the other ones, how to have, as I said already, have a direct impact on the local population. To me it's very important the experience the volunteers actually go through themselves on the ground. Um, I think it's all the, the important issues, you know, like, you know, our whole consumerism and greed and being so used to a certain way of living and certain expectations that to take the people back to the ground and start with basic things is, you know, the ability to cook over an open fire and to cook communally and everybody shares and, you know, that sort of, of, of spirit of man that we get back to the basics again and start re-understanding and to be able to share that with the volunteers and to and to really just sit quietly these impatient sit for hours and hours and hours watching learning tracking getting up onto mountains to scan areas and then finally the the result of getting getting relatively close to elephants are very habituated to our presence whereas they're quite wild normally towards most tourists and other people Elephants are used to us and um, to show people that that is possible and to get them to understand the value, I think that is the, the essential thing of what we're trying to achieve. Uh, this is a tree I was telling you. Uh, this is a, a tricky comifora, the one with a nice juicy for them. That's why you can see they've been chewing here and carrying it as a takeaway. So it's very nice for them. And uh, this is one of the reasons they have uh, to get out of the riverbed in rain season to come and um, depend on this tree for a while until it's dry. On really a more personal level because I feel like I'm more closely involved in conservation actually. And, and really doing something that can help the people. Uh, Humans want everything. And uh, we fail to understand that, you know, um, only human that can multiply, but uh, Mother Earth, Planet Earth doesn't do that. A lot of people in conservation deal with wildlife, um, but we've got to realize that we are now part and parcel of, of the entire process. Um, so conservation no, no longer is just working with wildlife, it is working with people and wildlife, trying to create something in between that works for everybody in that position. Us as humans on this planet, we've all realised lately what a fragile existence everything is. And it's not something we should even think about. It's something we have to do. And it's not important to me whether it happens here in the desert or wherever it happens. But it's, it's, I think if we do not at this point find that link that we've lost with this planet, there's very little hope left.